Hey kiters, are you looking for the next place to ride? Located in Brazil, the Ceará region has so many great kite spots. In this section of Behind the Dune, we'll review some of the most popular ones we've visited. And in this video, we'll cover Ilha do Guajeru, which I still have no clue how to pronounce right. At high tide, the spot is essentially one enormous saltwater lagoon, one of the biggest in Ceará. But as always, no spot is perfect. This review should help you decide if this spot is really what you're looking for. In order to give you a complete image of the spot, let's review the 9 key aspects about it. Location, so that you know how to get there. Tides, as they have a big impact on this spot. Wind, to make sure you pack the right kites. Beaches, including takeoff and landing conditions. Water conditions, to see if it fits your riding style. Temperature, so that you can pack accordingly. Infrastructure, because life is better with a toilet, right? Downwinders, because this is Sahara, baby. And most importantly, nightlife, for all you party animals out there. If you feel there's something we didn't cover, let us know in the comment section below. Alright, let's get started. Ilha do Guajiru is located in the Serra region of Brazil, right next to the city of Itarema. The closest large airport is located in the city of Fortaleza, and that's most likely where you should fly to. From the airport, you can either rent a car or take a costly transfer. Then you go for a 2 to 3 hours drive to Ilha do Guajiru, or 5 or 6 if you took a bus. And there are no challenges to drive there, no crossing the sand, the sea or anything else like that. So choosing to get a car might be the best option if you want to have some flexibility to move around spots later on. So turn on the navigation system and let it guide you there. More info about why you would want to drive will be given in the infrastructure section of the video. The tide has a massive impact on your riding experience in Ilha do Guajiru. Various locations in the lagoon become very shallow or completely dry at low tide. So it's best you make sure the tide aligns well with your days. So if the high tide is at midday, you'll get the longest riding experience. But note that there are still some portions which are accessible at low tide. More about those in one of the later sections. Most likely, the key reason you're considering this place is because of its ever-blowing winds. Similarly to the rest of the region, the wind blows from the east, which gives you a perfect side wind on this spot. In addition to this, the winds are strong from July to February. Statistically, you'll find that the wind is blowing between 15 to 25 knots most of the time. And this is absolutely perfect. So make sure you pack all your kites of 11 square meter and below. Or just pack all your kites as usual, because you'd never know that the wind would stop to blow, for like, the first time ever. And now let's talk about the beaches. The main beach is Praia do Barra, it is situated midway of the lagoon. That's where you'll find most of the posada, hotels and restaurants. And there, depending on the tide, you'll have more or less area to take off and land. At high tide, there is just a very narrow strip of grass between the water and the buildings. That strip is narrower than kite lines, so there's always the risk of crashing your kite on the buildings. At low tide, you'll have a bit more of a beach area, though quite muddy. And when the tide is lowest, there is very little water left, and you can't really kite anymore. Slightly downwind from the buildings, you'll find an area where the beach is fairly large and you can always start and land there. It's not perfect fine sand though, more like a mixture of rock and shells, and it's dry at low tide. So that's a place where many lessons are given. Downwind of that, if you go quite a bit further, by car preferably, is an area where you can kite regardless of the tide. And the last area is all the way upwind, where you can kite regardless of the tide as well. Just know that the water is surrounded by trees there, so you better be careful. In Ilia do Guajiru, the water conditions go from butterflat at pure low tide and tends to be quite choppy when the tide rises. If you're looking for waves, you better pass. Though actually, you can cross to the ocean side. You'll be 
quite lonely over there, and that's definitely not what this spot is known for. Temperature ranges from 26 to 32 degrees all year round, and that means you're not gonna get to wear your board shorts over your wetsuit in there, even though that looks so stylish. What a pity. The sun is also extremely strong. It will burn you to a crisp within half an hour, so you better pack tons of sunscreen. And as for the water, it's 28 degrees. So perfect is all I could say. Talking about infrastructure, you'll find all the comforts of the modern life. Wi-Fi, AC and pizza, what more could you ask for? And of course, since there's absolutely nothing else to do other than kitesurfing, all the infrastructure is geared towards the kite surfer. And yes, that means electric kite pumps, areas to rinse and dry your gear, storage, gear rental, lessons, anything you want. There is even a small kite shop where you can buy some gear. And there's plenty of restaurants to fill up your belly after your sessions. Also, you can drive to the nearby city of Itarema if you want to eat something different or just go to the supermarket. Downwinders are quite a big thing in Seara. You can either go downwind in the lagoon all the way into the sea or start upwind in Almofala for example and ride all the way down to Ila de Guajiru. It's a common service offered by the Posadas. And now about the nightlife. To be honest the nightlife sucks, there is just nothing to do. Everything closes early in the evening and everybody goes to sleep. And there doesn't seem to be any nightlife in Itarama either. So that's definitely not a strong point. But in the end, you came here to kite anyway. If you have any cool facts about Ila de Guajiru, tell us about it in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it, and your knowledge will be used for the greater good. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to our channel, as we publish more videos about Brazil and other kite spots worldwide in general. So have a great day and enjoy your next session.